This video is to teach you about leather strops and stropping your knife. Stropping is different than honing. We'll talk about the differences and show you how to do it right now. Now the primary difference between honing and stropping is a honing disc uses a ceramic most of the time. You want to finish off with a leather strop. Now there have been a lot of discussions on honing versus stropping. Some people say stropping is not necessary, it's really for aesthetics. And other people say honing is absolutely necessary. You should do it every time you use a knife and don't worry about the stropping. Well, as a chef, somebody who does cooking for other individuals, a lot of barbecuing and a lot of knife usage, I can tell you based on my experience that stropping with a leather strop is absolutely the last thing you should do and should be part of your knife sharpening process at the end of your sharpening after you use a honing disc. Now, the reason for that is because most likely you're gonna have micro abrasions on there, which this honing should take care of. With a leather strop, you end up polishing that apex. Now this is where people come into the argument saying, that's right, you're just polishing, it's for aesthetics. But I can tell you, stropping my knife, I can actually get my knife quite a bit sharper. It does sharpen. That's why if you go to barber shops, the old school shops, you'll see the leather strop, they have the razor and they're stropping it. It's not to polish the razor blade, it's to keep it sharp and to make sure that thing's gonna be able to cut you nice and smooth and not actually damage your skin. Is stropping necessary? I say absolutely. If you don't do it, it's not gonna hurt anything. I just think it's a great part of the knife sharpening process. It finishes off the knife. It does polish that apex to a certain extent. We'll talk about that. But it does let you put that finishing touch on your blade. Now, when it comes to stropping, Hone sells a leather strop, and it's a really nice one. This is actually my, one of my strops that I use that has a compound on it. We'll talk about compounds. But the Hone strop, it's really nice. They did a great job on this. You can see the wood base is is, it's thicker, it's a little bit wider, the leather on here is really nice and thick, and it's a really nice quality leather strop. It also comes in the Hone Accessories Kit, which comes with all the different disc grits you can use, from 200 up to the ceramic, which is at 3000, as well as the angle mate and the leather strop. So it's really an incredible value. You get everything in the Pro Accessories Kit. I highly recommend you get it. If not, you can also go to my Amazon store. I've got other leather strops as well that will help you pick out the right strop for your Hone Rolling Knife Sharpener to get that thing really sharp. The one thing about strops is that they come in flat or smooth leather and on the back, this one has a nonstick base so when you put it down, it doesn't slip. There are other strops, such as these paddles, that are two-sided. There's kind of a rough side and there's a smooth side. And what I like about this is I can use different compounds, and I use a diamond compound or paste to get the knife even sharper and polish that edge more. Now, the thing that I also use is there's a compound that's a Tormek compound. It's about a 3000 grit equivalent. It's not quite the same as using a honing disc, but this is actually a compound to strop the knife. If you were to get one compound put on your hone strop, I would say the Tormek compound is all you need. Now, there are people that are out there that are huge fans of gunny juice. There's other compounds. I think they're all good, I just think that there's a massive price difference where you can end up spending $40 or $50 for a compound or spending $5 or $10 for a compound. Will you see a big difference at the end? For us average knife users, chefs in the kitchen, backyard barbecuers, you're not gonna really see a difference. This compound that I use, which is in my Amazon store, is a fantastic compound. It's not as expensive and it does a fantastic job. Can you get something that somebody will come out as better? These aren't as good. Absolutely, but you know what, at the end of the day, I'm looking for functionality, I'm not looking for beauty, and if these compounds let me accomplish what I want, which is a razor sharp knife, that is all I really care about. Now, the nice thing is, you get one leather strop. I recommend you end up having two strops, one for the plain leather, and another for your compound. I like having the versatility of being able to do a plain leather strop if I want, and putting compound on this to even further refine my apex or the blade edge of the knife. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a sharpening test real quick and I'm gonna gauge where this knife is. I know it's super sharp. It's a newer knife, it's German steel, and this is one of my go-to knives in the kitchen. So I'm honing it regularly, but let's take a read at the gauge, see where it's at, 
I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually apply this on the leather strop. Not gonna use any compound, we're gonna use just the plain leather strop. And we'll see what our results look like. So we're gonna go ahead and use our best tester. You'll see the chart that I put up here to see where it's at. And let's go ahead and test this knife. Now you wanna do it in the same spot. So we're gonna go ahead and put this about um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go about seven in. When I say seven, this is used obviously a lot of people for meat cutting or vegetables so they don't stick. We're gonna go seven indents in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where we're gonna cut across and take the reading on this knife. So I have it centered and we'll go ahead and see where we're at. Slow pressure is all you do. You don't wanna slam this down. And let's take a look and see how sharp it is. So we're at 218. 218. That's a great score. We're going to go ahead and strop it, and then we're going to see how sharp it gets after that. Now, there's many ways you can strop your knife. Some people will say to do it at an angle. Some people will say to do it straight across. Some people will say if you sharpen it one way, you should strop it one way. And I'm here to tell you, honestly, it just doesn't matter. As long as you strop the knife properly at the right angle, it's going to come out fantastic. Now, people will want to argue that, and that's fine. I'm not here as a knife professional. I'm here as a chef, a pit master, and somebody to help laymen understand sharpening and get them into the process to enjoy it and not worry about so many nuances that you're so focused on if you're doing it absolutely perfectly or not. And am I going to screw up the knife? I can tell you right now that if you don't strop correctly, you can and will make the knife duller. And that's because you have a very sharp blade. And if you have the angle too steep up and you're rubbing on this leather, you're going to start taking that blade down. So there is a caveat that you can make your knife more dull. So it's important to kind of get muscle memory and know the angles of your knife. This is an 18 degree blade. It will stay at an 18 degree blade. And for those of you that have seen my videos, I like 17 degrees, but this is so close at 18, I'm just not going to screw with it. And with the angle mate from Hone, the awesome thing is I set it at 18 degrees and I get 18 degrees on the knife. You can watch my other video right up here that talks about the angle mate and show you how that does change the angle. But we're gonna stay at 18 degrees. If I put the knife up, that this is now flush with the leather. Once it's flush, this angle meets the leather, I go up just a slight amount. I mean, just like, a, not even a millimeter, and then I start my stropping. Now, on a larger knife, you may not be able to get the knife all the way across the leather strop until you have a lot of practice. And even then, you can do this in halves. So you can take the knife, you can actually strop the first upper half of the knife, like so, and then you can move down to the lower half and you can strop the lower half. At the end of the day, it's gonna be exactly the same. And again, I'm talking from a practical standpoint for those of you watching that really just wanna understand how to do this, don't want the complications, and don't need to go into a deep dive about this stuff because it's just not that complicated. So we'll start with the leather strop. We're gonna put this down and basically you don't wanna apply pressure pushing. You just wanna make sure there's contact on the strop and then we're gonna run that across at kind of an even pace. People ask, well, how fast do you go? How slow do you go? I usually go about this fast. One 1,000. That's about it. So I just do that, and I go across the leather. Now, I'm also making contact. As you can see, I like to hold this as an angle this way. Um, it's just what's comfortable with me. Some people you'll see stropping like this. Some will strop straight up and down. Uh, it really just depends on your comfort level. You'll be able to accomplish the same thing, however it's comfortable to you. So find a comfort zone. I like this angle because I find that I can actually move the blade across and up and get the entire blade of the knife. So I just do typically five, six, maybe eight passes per side. There's no exact number. You can do four a side, but really a couple passes is all you need and this thing will be stropped, especially because you're not stropping a dull knife. This is a sharp knife. We saw on the best tester, it's pretty sharp. So we're gonna go ahead and give it, I'll give it eights on each side and then we'll go and test it. So one, two, three, for, again, no pressure, just let it sit on the leather strop and just hold it down there so making contact, you don't need to press down on it. As a matter of fact, if you press down, you probably will cause more damage than not because this leather is soft. So when you press down, you press down, you're actually gonna cause the leather to push up over the top of this knife as you go and that's gonna cause a problem. So again, really light pressure is all you need just to make contact and if you listen, you hear it, it's just not very loud, but it is making contact, going across there nice and smooth. And again, you can go half if you want. You can, you can start one, move down to two, move down to three. It's all gonna work, trust me. So we'll go on this side and I'm gonna go ahead and give this some stropping. And again, you'll notice here, I keep it at an angle. I don't do it this way, I like this. And I run it all the way across 
that blade so that I'm getting the entire apex across the strop. And you know, that's about as fast as you need to go. You don't need to go real fast. And obviously if you just go like this, you're not gonna do anything. So just a nice pace, like a 1-1000, one, 1-1000. One thousand, one, one thousand. It's really all you need to do. So we'll go ahead and give this some shots here across, say eight times. And I usually go twice. So we'll go ahead and do this side and then that's it. We'll give a test and we'll see what our leather is like. And if I did it improperly, I pressed too hard, I'm at the wrong angle, probably gonna get a lower score. So we'll go ahead and see and put this to the test. Again, you'll find your muscle memory where the angle's at. Um, it's better to be a little shallow than to be too steep. And you'll notice that there's black kind of on here because we actually are removing some of the steel. Um, it's very slight and it will coat that over time and get black. I just basically can rub it off. You don't need to like wash it. You don't want to wash leather, but I'll just take a, a rag like so and I'll just hit this, you know, a couple times and takes the deep black off and you're good to go. So let's go and test and see what our score is after we hit the leather straw. So now we're gonna do the best test again, same location. We're gonna go in to where we started on this. Make sure we count and make sure we're in the same spot here. Okay, we're gonna put this down and we'll see how we did. 113, there's the proof. 113 doubled the sharpness. Take a look at the chart here and see the difference between what we initially got and 113. You saw it with your own eyes. That's a leather strop. That is not sharpening, it's not honing, it's stropping. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and let me know what kind of strops do you like? Do you like the paddle strops like this? Do you like the square strops? And do you use a compound or no compound? This is not a deep dive into stropping. It's the basics to show you how to strop with this absolutely fantastic Leather strop from Hone, really nice quality. You can get it individually on their website. You can also get it in the accessories kit, which is the pro accessories kit online that comes with all the discs, including the ceramic disc, the leather strop, and the angle main. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Smoke on, baby.